Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Political Fight Club. I'm your host, Robert Durden. I'm going to be doing a short episode today. My friend Ian Berg is not with us today. He's uh, he's going to be coming over this weekend for episode two, so we're just going to do a short one today. We're going to talk about a few things that are going on on the left and a few things that are going on with Joe Biden. Um, next episode, we're going to be going, going over budget reconciliation, uh, the riot at the Capitol, uh, a little bit about Oregon decriminalizing all of their drugs, which is huge news and pretty cool. We already knew about that, but that went into effect a couple of days ago, and we'll break that down for you. And, of course, Reddit and uh, what's going on in the stock market. Uh, we'll talk about whether or not politicians should own stock. Um, other than that, there might be just a few other things thrown in that we might hit, depending on if we have time or not. Today, I'd like to talk about a couple of things on the left, particularly Bernie and his CNN embarrassment the other day with Anderson Cooper. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about AOC and what happened on NBC with her live stream and her more or less on live television admitting that she had been sexually assaulted when she was younger and, of course, uh, the reaction to that. And then lastly, I'd like to talk about the things that Joe Biden has done in the first 13 days of his uh, presidency. And spoiler alert, it's looking pretty goddamn shitty. So let's start with the rules. Uh, there's no one here with me today, so we won't always have a debate. But I'd like to go over the rules with everyone at every episode, if possible. The first rule of Fight Club is talk about Fight Club. Go on out and talk with anybody in politics if you can, as long as you know that that person is willing to have an honest conversation. Talk about Fight Club. Two, pick your battles, know your shit. Three, know your opponent. Four, keep the debate on topic. Five, admit when you're wrong. That, that last one is a big one, guys. We're always going to admit when we're wrong. It is admirable, respectable. If you can change your ideology or the way you think based on empirical evidence or someone making a good argument to you, that's commendable. So we're going to learn to admit we're wrong. Um, so let's get right into Bernie and uh, his interview on CNN with Anderson Cooper. This was absolutely embarrassing for Bernie. Um, and I think he knows it too. So if anyone hasn't seen it, basically Anderson asked him about stimulus checks and Bernie adopted the exact verbiage that all the neolibs are using right now, where he basically was like, well, I, I think it's important that we get some stimulus out immediately to the American people. And of course, that means the $1,400 checks plus the $600 that they already got equals the 2000 And of course, bullshit, Bernie. Bullshit. That's a horrible argument. Why are you using it? It, it broke my heart to see him argue that and use that verbiage. Because what that means is that he's adopted the framing of the neolibs and he's supposed to be fighting them. So it's frustrating to see him do that because, Bernie, they're not your boss. Like, Joe Biden is not your boss. You can't lose your job if you don't adopt their framing. You just tell them to go fuck themselves and go out there and keep fighting for $2,000 checks. A week ago, Bernie went public confidently saying he had all of the votes in the Senate that he needed to pass $2,000 checks with budget reconciliation. And he seemed confident on it. Now, I don't know if they lied to him, probably, the neolibs, but they don't have any intention of giving us $2,000 checks. They never did. They told Bernie that they did, but that's all a lie. They, they are plenty fine allowing the Republicans to be the scapegoats in this fight, and now it's gone from 2000 down to 1400 and then the new Republican bill is about 1000 I believe. And Joe Biden had a big old powwow with all of his buds, uh, Susan Collins, and a whole bunch of other Republican senators right before they came to that number. So I'll tell you what happened. Joe went in there. He, well, he lied to Bernie, says, we're, oh, yeah, of course, we're going to try to push for $2,000 checks. Then he goes in, and he... Uh, buddies up, gives the knuckles to all of his buddies, the Republican senators, and is like, yeah, as long as you guys are willing to take the flack for lower stimulus checks, lower it as much as you want, as long as I don't have to take the blame. So Biden is, I think they lied to Bernie. They are not going for uh, $2,000 stimulus checks. They're not even pretending anymore. And Bernie, you look like cuckzilla after going in and framing it that way. People that fought for you and that believe in you are 
decimated emotionally when you go out there and do stuff like that. You bend the knee during your campaign and bow out with no concessions from Joe Biden for your endorsement. And now you're going out there and you're letting him embarrass you. You're letting him make you look like a liar because you said he was going to be FDR light. Your exact words were, Joe Biden should have the most progressive presidency since FDR. Well, it looks like your boy Joe is acting a lot more like Herbert Hoover. Come on, Bernie, you're better than this. You're not doing enough behind the scenes. You're not being strong enough. And it, I swear to God, diseases of despair spike every time Bernie Sanders goes out and cucks up like this. It's, it's horrible. So buck up, buttercup. You need to start doing better behind the scenes because we're not getting anything done. And if all you're going to do is adopt their framing when you can't get what you want, then, I don't know, you're more or less worthless at this point. All right, let's talk about AOC. Now, the story with AOC was that two nights ago on NBC, I believe it was, don't hold me to that, she was on live stream and she was, of course, she's been on Twitter like crazy lately talking about her trauma and all of the stress undergone by all of the Congress people after the Capitol riot. And it's a little bit insufferable because she's going a little bit over the top and she's getting a lot of flack for it because... A lot of people on the left are telling her that she's just kind of muddying the waters and distracting from the Medicare for All floor vote falling through and the unholy firestorm that has since happened to her since then. And basically she's been called out nonstop by the left for not doing enough and we're not getting anything for our for the people during the pandemic and the depression. So I, in fact believe that that's the right thing to do, pressure AOC into doing the right thing and fighting harder. But then she went on uh, NBC last night and she admitted that she's having a lot of breakdowns and emotional trauma right now because she was, in fact, sexually assaulted early in her life. And so now the trauma that she underwent with the Capitol riot is causing her some emotional issues right now. She teared up and cried when she was talking about it. And then the subsequent backlash on the left was basically why I'm doing this show was it was reprehensible and disgusting. So I'm here to stand up for AOC. I've been against a lot of her policy decisions and stratagems lately. But if you're on the left and you think it's okay to go out there and say to basically say that her trauma is negligible compared to someone who survives Sandy Hook or Parkland or you want to compare traumas to other people that have had worse, you're gross. We don't compare traumas, guys. Come on, that's that's one of the worst things you can ever do. It's inhumane. Of course, Alex, your trauma is real. I understand that you've been through a lot. And uh, I, I do apologize for everyone on the left that is going after you in the wrong ways on this. Um, we are here for you. Of course, you've got all the support in the world if you need it. Um, I do have a message for you, and that message is that when you have trauma inflicted on you, no matter how severe, you have a choice. You can either let that trauma destroy you and sit around and think about it, and it'll break you down for the rest of your life. Or you can get some help, get back up, dust yourself off, and use the, the pain in your heart to try to prevent that trauma from ever happening to anyone else again. So I'm asking you, Alex, to go and actually take this pain that you have right now, all of this, you know, this angst and despair and depression and everything that's going on with you, and use it to do something useful. You have a position of power. And uh, I think that if you were to focus on things like misogyny problems in this country or uh, f you know reproductive rights even in this country you can take that anger that you feel deep down from that horrible thing that happened to you and turn it into something good use your pain to wield power to go after people that have done horrible things to other people like what happened to you so I would I would you have the news cycle right now. I would go after Joe Biden. Joe Biden was for the Hyde Amendment for the longest time. Now, he since said he's not, but for most of his career, he was for the Hyde Amendment. And that, of course, was the amendment that blocked funding for Planned Parenthoods. 
Um, he also was heard publicly saying, or was even on the record saying, that he does not believe a girl's body is 100% her own. In I'm paraphrasing there. And also, of course, the biggest one is Tara Reid. Her story was completely buried about what Joe Biden did to her, uh, and it was because he was running for president, and everyone ignored her and smeared the living hell out of her. So, Alex, I behove you to do your best to take those experiences and make sure that Joe Biden sees some accountability. And if you can't can't get accountability out of him, at least leverage him to do good things for women in the future. You have that leg to stand on because of your past. Take that anger, that rage, and go after Joe Biden. Hit him on the things I just hit him on and try to wield some sort of power over him to get him to do some good things for women, even if it's just because he feels ashamed. So I, I do apologize again, uh, AOC. Um, I do not condone any of those personal attacks on you or comparisons of trauma between you and other people. That's gross. Um, and any of my listeners, if you're doing that to AOC, you can go get fucked. I don't, I don't, I don't condone that whatsoever. I don't put up with it. So lastly here, let's go over what Joe Biden has accomplished in his first 13 days in office. So, as usual, I'm going to give you an update on the COVID. Uh, we're, we're on pace to have about 500,000 deaths by the end of February, a little under that. We're averaging about 2,000 deaths a day. Um, it will probably go down for a little bit, but then it will probably spike about 10 days after the Super Bowl because there will be parties and the Super Bowl itself, which will be a super spreader event. If they're, I don't even know. Are they still are they even having it in person? Um, but there will be parties no matter what. So after the Super Bowl parties, there will inevitably be a lot of extra infections for about another month after the Super Bowl. After that, it should level out for the rest of the winter. And as the warmer weather comes in, the infection and the death rate should go down a little bit. All right, let's talk Biden. Um, he passed an executive order, many executive orders, basically undoing all of Donald Trump's executive orders. One of Donald Trump's executive orders included a rule called the insulin rule, which now Biden has undone temporarily. Now, the insulin rule was going to go into effect a couple of days ago, and what it did was outlaw price gouging on insulin and epinephrine, or EpiPens. So it made it so it was illegal for distributors of those, the insulin and EpiPens, to jack their prices up from what they bought it from the actual supplier for. They have to pass their savings on to their customers. So that's a great rule. It was going to keep insulin and EpiPen prices down, and in fact, Joe Biden has rolled that back. And in fact, I know people personally who are already seeing their insulin prices go up, which is awful and bad news for anybody that has allergies or diabetes. Um, Biden also sent his uh, a convoy into the Syrian oil fields last week. Now, that was, I think, about 100 to 200 troops in a convoy that was escorted by helicopters, and this is this came two days after Bashar al-Assad told basically the country's biggest newspaper that they were going to get American troops out of Syria. And uh, that was his warning to American troops and to Biden and to the incoming administration that American troops are no longer welcome there. And Biden was basically just like, you know, hey, Jack, I'll do what I want. I, fuck you. I'm, I'm an American. I'll go wherever I want to. And <laughs> break international law where I see fit and whatever. I know it's a horrible Joe Biden impression. I'll work on it. Um, so that's bad. He's being ultra hawkish on Syria. He issued 31 new drilling permits, which for all you people that have been arguing to me that Joe Biden has a nice progressive Green New Deal coming up, that does not, this does not bode well for your argument. So I, uh, yeah, would you care to take your bullshit argument back? So this is the least progressive thing you can do in terms of climate change. Of course, it's more of the same. Joe Biden equals Trump here. Uh, no health care expansion or COVID relief, despite everything that's going on still. No student debt relief. And this is a crazy one. I don't understand why he's not doing it. It's an easy, from his perspective, the economy has to be one of the top two or three things he cares about. 
So, because I mean, obviously all of his donors care about the stock market and the economy doing well and him being able to maybe get reelected and stuff like that on just the economy staying stable. So nobody's able to spend any money right now, you know, that's in the bottom 60% of the population. One of the easiest ways to inject adrenaline into the market would just be to forgive all student loan debt because that would free up so many young people that have this 100 or 200 or 500 dollar payment every single month that's all money they can now spend on things in the market and uh of course i don't know why he doesn't do it it's probably because he's in the pocket of the uh people who stu you know, own the student loans or whatever he's in everybody's pocket he's dirty as they come but this would be a great way to revitalize the economy not to mention you know the moral aspect of it would un or it would really help the millennials to get their feet under them which they really have not been able to do because of how much college debt they have and how expensive things are now. So I don't know. He hasn't done that yet. I, he never will. Um, but it, yeah, day 14, and he hasn't forgiven student loan debt. Kids are still in cages at the border, and this is insane too to me because so many neoliberals will come at me when I go after Biden, and they'll be like, well, be patient. Give him time, for goodness sake. And when you come at me, when I'm talking about kids in cages, and your first reaction is to go, well, be patient. Just give it a little bit of time. You are a sociopath. When people come at me, when all I do is call out Joe Biden on not giving stimulus to starving people, not giving health care to the uninsured and the sick, and not getting kids out of cages, and your response is, well, give him time. You are just as bad as the Trumpists because all you're doing is arguing backwards from your conclusion, which is Joe Biden good, defend him at all costs, don't critique Joe Biden. I'll tell you what, Blue MAGA, that's exactly what MAGA does. You guys are exactly the same. And you're also proving that you're equally sociopathic as some of those crazy right-wing extremists because you are you don't even think when someone says, oh, there's still kids in, kids in cages. You don't go, well... Yeah, I, that is something I wish Biden would do. I've never seen a Bidenite admit fault there. They just go, well, give him time. You are a sociopath. Admit it. You don't care about kids in cages. And you're no morally superior to MAGA if that's the way that you're arguing. And you're also not intellectually superior to MAGA if that's the way you're arguing as well, by the way. Which is why I say blue MAGA and MAGA are more or less the same. They just worship a different god. Um, lastly here... Uh, is Iran, and this is recent development over the last two or three days. So as you guys remember, Obama and Biden are responsible for the Iran deal, which kept Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. And then, of course, Trump tore it up when he first got into office, and now Biden is in office, and he could easily get right back in the Iran deal, but he's not. Now, here's what's going on that's crazy, and why I say I worry that he's actually going to start a war with Iran is... The Biden administration has been talking to newspapers, and I've seen headlines in newspapers saying, quote unquote, Iran is only a certain amount of days or weeks away from being capable of building a nuclear weapon. Okay, I see what you're doing here. Biden doesn't even want to get back in his own deal. Ask yourself why. It's because it, this has... WMD in Iraq written all over it. That's exactly what they're doing. He could easily get back in the Iran deal and keep Iran from having a nuclear weapon. It's his own fucking deal. It's his own fucking deal. But he won't get back into it. Why? Because I think they want to keep their options open for going to war with Iran. And that's that would explain the headlines as well. They want the populace to worry that Iran is going to be nuclear capable, which I'm not even sure that's true. I haven't read that anywhere that they are uh, they are capable. Even if they were, they're still I I would say not a threat to the U.S. But regardless, just get them back in the Iran deal. They want to be back in the Iran deal. There's no reason why Joe Biden isn't back in it right now. It makes no sense other than that he wants to escalate to war with Iran. So um, it's looking really awful for the Biden administration for the first two weeks. If he keeps on this pace for more than another couple of weeks, 2022 midterms are out of the question. The Democrats are going to get wiped out. And in fact, I think Raphael Warnock in Georgia is going to get killed for uh, promising those $2,000 checks and over and over again to his constituents in order to win that election. If Biden doesn't get those out in a timely manner, 
he's going to get killed in his re-election because uh, it was a special election for Warnock, whereas Ossoff had a, re a regular election. He'll be six years in the Senate. So um, I think Warnock is going to lose in Georgia in the Senate in 2022, and uh, it'll be all Joe Biden's fault, I think. Um, so, I, you know, he's got to get those checks out in the next week, maybe less. Otherwise, I think we're basically, as the Democratic Party is doomed in 2022 if they can't get that done. Um, because they're just showing how anemic they are, how they really can't get anything done. They're basically just Republicans minus the mean tweets. They have decorum. Um, so that's what we've got for today. Next time we're going to be talking about the Boogaloo Boys, executive orders, um, a little bit on impeachment, and uh, a little bit on budget reconciliation and uh, Bernie. But of course, you know, he was going to use budget reconciliation to get us our $2,000 checks last week. Apparently he has reframed it so that he's going to use budget reconciliation to get us our $400 checks in sometime in mid-May or something like that. And then the, the, the Democrats will act like that's the biggest victory in the history of mankind, even though Trump got us, what, 1800 And they'll get us like 600 to 1200 maybe, and then act like they're superior to Trump. Yeah, bullshit. This Biden presidency has been shameful so far. Thanks uh, for being with me tonight, guys. I'll have another episode with Ian coming up sometime this weekend. Keep fighting the good fight out there.